Here we're going to be looking at convertible preferred stock where it's converted into common stock. And we're going to be looking at our common stock's par value versus the book value here, the preferred stock, and the effect that it has on the equity accounts here on these stock equity accounts, and also how it affects our retained earnings here as equity. Okay, so for our example here, Corporation A converts 1,000 shares of its $50 par preferred stock. And what they're going to convert it into is common stock here. And what we're going to be looking at is two cases here. The first case is where they're going to issue 2,000 shares of $10 par common stock for these 1,000 shares here of the preferred stock. And then case two where they're going to issue 7,000 shares of $10 par common stock for those 1,000 shares here of preferred stock. And the other thing we have to note here is the preferred stock was is originally issued here at $60 per share. That's the market price. And that's what they received here for the preferred stock from the uh, on their accounts here when they issued this preferred stock and then the other point is common stock is trading at $26 per share here at the conversion date and when we're, we're going to be using the book value method here and this really isn't going to come into play but I'm noting what the uh, trading price or the market price here was at the conversion date okay so let's go look at our general rules here Okay, for convertible preferred stock, point one here, you consider it part of shareholders equity unless there's a mandatory redemption exists here on the preferred stock. And what we mean by shareholders equity, it's not part of any debt at this point. It's considered an equity instrument, not a debt instrument. Point two here, you do not recognize any gain or loss when the shareholders exercise the preferred stock. That is when they tr uh, exchange the preferred stock here for the common stock. And point three, you use the book value method when you're doing this conversion. And we're really going to be looking at, there's two cases here for the book value method here. Point A or case A here is going to be where the par value of the common stock issued is less than the book value of the preferred stock. Then you increase or credit your additional paid in capital here for uh, common stock for the difference. And then case B here, if the par value of the common stock issued exceeds the book value of the preferred stock, then you reduce or your debit, your retained earnings here for the difference. And we're going to, and that's usually done here when it exceeds the book value here. There are some exceptions. But we're going to look, be looking at both cases here. Okay, so let's look at case one here. Again, convertible preferred stock, the book value method. That's the method that you're going to be using. So common stock, this, uh, this case here is where the common stock par value, in this case it'll be $20,000, is less than the preferred stock's book value here of $60,000. And what we're going to do here in this case, we're going to convert 1,000 shares here of preferred stock into 2,000 shares here of common stock. So what's going to we're going to issue 2,000 shares here of common stock to the um, uh, preferred stock shareholders, and the preferred stock shareholders are going to return to the uh, company here 1,000 shares of their preferred stock. Okay, so let's start with we're going to have these accounts here, and when we're talking about this case here where the common stock's par value is less than the preferred stock's book value, this is where it's only going to involve exchange of the stocks. There's not going to be any retained earnings involved in this. And we're going to look at we're going to be looking at the second case where it involves retained earnings. But this is the case here where we're going to par value here of common stock is less than the book value here of the preferred stock. So let's just start out with our common stock par accounts here. We're going to and we'll have uh, additional paid in capital accounts for both the preferred stock and our common stock. But looking at our common stock par of, um, of value here, what we would do on this exchange, well, there's going to be 2,000 shares issued here at $10 per share par amount. And that's going to be $20,000. So that's going to increase our common stock account here, our par account here by $20,000 when we issue those common stocks. Okay, then let's move over to our preferred stock here. And again, we're going to have our par value account here, those 1,000 shares here that are being converted or being bought back here by the company and converted into common stock. 1,000 shares times a $50 par per share, that's going to equate here to $50,000. So we would debit or reduce our preferred stock account here by $50,000 on this conversion. Now, uh, we also have this additional paid in capital here for preferred stock, and that's really based on what we originally issued these uh, these stock this stock at. And before I go on with that here, remember I, I'm showing the original, we have original amounts here in the millions of dollars for each of, the, each of our accounts here. That's what we were starting with. Okay, so let's go back to additional paid in capital here for preferred stock. Based on that market price, that original market price here, we, it, uh, we would have 
had an additional paid in capital, we're going to reduce that here by $10,000. So that is really based on this fact here where we have the fact here that we had that $60 market price, that's what we received on it, less the $50 par amount that we credited to, a $50 per share par amount, which we credited to our par account, and that's a $10 difference times those 1,000 shares here, that equates to $10,000 dollars here on that we had on our we're reducing it here by the amount here the additional paid in capital here by that simply that difference here okay so reduce debit or additional paid in capital here for ten thousand dollars and then debit our preferred stock prior amount here for by fifty thousand and we need a balancing entry here to do in to go into between our common stock uh, amount here of twenty thousand and the fifty thousand here and the ten thousand here debit to our preferred stock and what we're talking about here in this fifty thousand and ten thousand this is where that book value comes into play here for the preferred stock so we have uh, fifty thousand in our par value plus ten thousand additional paid in capital gives us that book value here of sixty thousand dollars that's being uh, exchanged here or converted here uh, for in our preferred stock and that's what we have to look at here when we're talking about our balancing entry here with our common stock par amount. So we have credit here at 20000 in our common stock par amount here. And we have this $60,000 balance here, debit balance in the preferred stock book value here. And we need a balancing entry. And it's going to go to additional paid in capital here, common stock. That's where any of the difference here between the book value here of the preferred stock and the par value here of the common stock comes into play. So we can look at that here. So we had the per, uh, preferred stock par here of 50,000 up here plus the additional paid in capital here for preferred stock of 10,000 and then we have the $20,000 uh, uh, credit here to our common stock par amount. So the difference between the preferred stocks book here of in this case it would be 60,000 less the common stocks par here of 20,000 gives us additional paid in capital at a balancing amount here of $40,000. So that's where this is where this additional paid in capital uh, flow uh, where this comes to play here when we're talking about this uh, common stocks par value here of $20,000 which is less than the preferred stocks book value here of $60,000 and that's our our ex that's case one here. And what we have to note here with this additional paid in capital in our common stock, uh, how we use that here. There is no gain or loss here to the balance uh, on on the exchange here of this uh, convertible preferred stock. You don't recognize any gain or loss going to your income statement. In this case, it flows into additional paid in capital here for the common stock. So everything stayed on our in our equity accounts here. All we did is uh, we exchanged preferred stock here for common stock, uh, preferred stock holders got common stock, and then they return the preferred stock here to the company. And just remember here, book value, what you're working with here, your preferred stock, um, you take your book value here and you balance it with your common stock's par amount, and any excess goes into additional paid in capital here for your common stock. Okay, so we've looked at that case one here. Now let's go look at case two here. Again, convertible preferred stock book value method. This is the case here where our common stock's par value of 70,000, we're going to calculate that here, is greater than the preferred stock's book value at 60,000. So our preferred stock book value is going to remain the same as our first example here. So let's start here with our common stock account here where we got, we're going to issue 7,000 shares here at common stock at the $10 par amount and that's going to be $70,000. Again using the book value method here. So we credit or increase our common stock account here by $70,000. And then moving over to our preferred stock account here, and this is what we're we're exchanging here. We're exchanging the common stock here for the preferred stock. So again, we just reduce our preferred stock by the amounts here that we had. So a thousand shares here converted at $50 par. So we debit or decrease our preferred stock here by 50,000. Same for, and then the difference here gone to an into additional paid in capital because we had received the market price of $60 per share and we $50 went to the par amount. So the di difference here of $10 per share times 1,000 shares goes to the additional paid in capital. Just to review that here. So this is our book value here for our preferred stock. And we have to compare it here to the common stocks 
par value, total par value. So in this case here, let's go back and look at it here. So um, this is the case here where our par value here of 70,000 here is greater than the preferred stocks book value here of 60,000. So what happens here is it doesn't the difference doesn't go into additional paid in capital or our balancing account here. What it goes into is going to be into retained earnings here. And we're going to reduce retained earnings by the difference here. So we have uh, the credit amount here of 70000 in our common stock account here. And then our book value, our total debits balance here in our preferred stock account that's being exchanged here is 60000 So we need a balancing entry here between our debits and our credits. And in this case, it goes into retained earnings here. Again, this is reducing our equity of prop our profits here. So we have the 60,000 book value on, a book value here of our preferred stock, 70,000 here cr uh, credit amount here in our common stock. So the difference here is 10,000 debit amount here is going to go into re reduce our retained earnings here on this conversion. So you can see here credits of 70,000 here balance with our debits here of 50,000 and plus 10,000 here for the preferred stock reduction in our preferred stock and also the balance goes into 10,000 here reduction here in our retained earnings here uh, actually reducing our equity profits here by 10,000 so just looking at that again here preferred stock we had 50,000 additional paid in capital here of, of the preferred stock of 10,000 and then subtract out the common stocks par amount here of 70,000 that gives us retained earnings a reduction in retained earnings here of $10,000 okay so again when we're looking at the case here where this common stocks par amount here is greater than the carrying value or the book value here, the preferred stock, then the difference or reduction goes in to retained earnings. It doesn't affect additional paid in capital here for common stock. Again, uh, looking down here, there's no gain or loss here. All it does is the balance goes to retained earnings. No gain or loss recognized on your income statement. It goes directly to retained earnings when you have this situation here. And the idea here is that the preferred stock shareholders are going to receive an additional return on the conversion, which reduces corporation, in this case, corporation A's reta retained earnings. Okay, so just remember here, when you're working with the uh, convertible preferred stock here, you use the book value method. And what you have to do is you have to compare this common stock's uh, par value, total par value that's being exchanged here on your common stock for your preferred stock and you compare the par value of your common stock with the carrying value here of the preferred stock, whatever it might be. In this case, it involved the par value of a preferred stock here plus the additional paid in capital here for preferred stock. Then you compare those amounts here. And in the case here where the common stock par value here was greater than the preferred stock's book value, then the balance gone to retain earnings or reduced retain earnings by the difference. And it didn't involve the additional paid in capital here for the common stock in that case. But in the case here where the common stock par value here was less than the book value here or the carrying value of the preferred stock that's being converted, then the difference gone into additional paid in capital here on the common stock. But in either case, um, there's no gain or loss. It's where the balance goes here. You're either reducing your equity account here on uh, for your common stock if you had if it were the common stocks par value was less than the book value or you you would be increasing excuse me increasing the additional paid in capital here for the common stock if that if the uh, common stocks par value here was less than the book value and then in the case where the common stocks par value here is greater than the book value of the preferred stock then you would be reducing your retained earnings account here. Okay, so that takes care of uh, issuing a convertible preferred stock and how you'd handle it in two different cases here. Looking at the comparing this common stock's par value, total par value to the preferred stock's book or carrying value on making this conversion.